Hello, a very good evening to all of you. Today we are going to talk about a very important part of technology. And uh, technology always carries a significant portion of your exam in your viva. And many candidates, they are scared of the technology scenarios. But how actually the technology scenarios goes? Let me tell you quickly. So the technology station, when you go to the technology station, you get two scenarios. Okay, so if somebody is telling you that you go to the technology station and you're getting questions like, okay, now start telling me about the EFJ Blue, start to, uh, talking about the, tell me the mechanism of CT scan. The scenario doesn't go like that. You get a normal case scenario. Okay, you get it like uh, they might take you to a prostate cancer. They might give you a PSA, which is elevated. You might talk about getting an MPMRI. Then they start asking about MRI. How does it work? What is MPMRI? What is biparametric MRI? Then you could talk about the staging. They could ask you about the PSMA PET scan. Tell me what how does a PET scan work? Or you can say about a bone scan. How does a bone scan work? Then they can tell you the management. How does the DEXA scan work? So this is how the technology station goes. No, don't read technology just for the sake of understanding or reading the particular machine. Don't read the machines, okay? Understand the concepts. Try to prepare your brain in the way that you are going to answer a scenario. It's never that you are going to answer a particular question on a machine. So the timer doesn't start like this. Okay, you start telling me about uh, DTPS scan. Start talking me about the MAC3 scan. It's not like that. The exam is not like that. You will get a scenario on a UPJO or a pelvic urethric junction obstruction. And then they will ask you about uh, ultrasound. How does it work? They can ask you on what is a MAC3 scan? How does it work? And what are the uh, radiation exposure and all this? That is what we always try to encourage you. Read it in a form of a scenario. Try prepare your brain that it's going to be a scenario. It's not going to be like, okay, let's read technology that way. So don't please, please avoid reading that way. Okay, so you'll get two scenarios. Okay, so two scenarios are basically two case discussions and technology includes imaging and not only imaging uh, like a CT, MRI, ultrasound or a nuclear imaging, not just imaging, it's various technologies like a, lithotripsy lasers and uh, multiple things we will be discussing in detail in the class today. The purpose is I want to tell you, you will be encountering scenarios in your exam where you will be asked to draw. Okay. It's not just technology where you'll be asked to draw. You can expect in your FRCS exam, you'll be using your pencil and a paper for more than three to four scenarios where you'll be asked to draw and explain the examiner whether you are clear about the concept or not. Similarly, ESWL is one such place where diagram becomes very important and candidates are scared and they take too much time in diagrams. So please don't do that. Okay. Let's understand ESWL very quickly. Now, what is basically ESWL? It's an extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. So we need shockwaves which are generated outside the body. That's why extracorporeal. And they help in stone fragmentation. That's why lithotripsy. Now, this extracorporeal shockwaves. So basically, we need a generator for that. Okay. And once we have a generator which produces the shock waves, we need a transmitter that is going to focus the shock wave. So we need a transmitter that is going to focus the shock wave to the stone to fragment it, okay? Now the basic principle is you should be very confident in understanding and explaining to the examiners, okay, this is how the ESWL works. Otherwise, if you are not sure, your examiner will not be satisfied, okay? So there is a generator which generates the shock waves and the generator can be of three types. So most of you know it already. So electrohydraulic, electromagnetic lithotripter and piezoelectric mechanism. So there are basically three mechanisms by which the shock waves are generated, electrohydraulic, electromagnetic or piezoelectric. We should know clearly about the distinct differences between the three because you will be asked to interpret this. Okay, If you don't know this, it's very difficult to recall something because your understanding has to be clear to make the examiner understand. So let's take up this. Okay, So my whole purpose is this generator is going to produce the shock waves and the area where the shock wave is produced, all the shock waves, the merge, are generated at a particular area. And that area is known as the first focal point, that is F1. Okay. And they are transmitted by a transmitter to be focused to cause lithotripsy at the where the stone is placed. So they will be focused at the F2 where the st stone is placed. So if I tell you this is the generator, the generator is producing the waves. Okay. And these waves are reflected by certain things to cause lithotripsy. 
So the generator is present as the first focal point and the stone is present at the second focal point that is the F2. Please be very clear about this concept. F1, F2, don't confuse it. It's very simple. Even for section one candidates, you're getting this MCQs. You're getting this at a single best answers. Let's move quickly. Now, the transmitters are basically the mirrors, okay, or reflectors, which are going to reflect the energy generated either by electrohydraulic mechanism, magnetic mechanism, or a piezoelectric mechanism. These mirrors are going to reflect it to the stone. When we, there is a mirror, there has to be a focal point. It will be an F1 or an F2. So there are mirrors. Now, there are different shapes of mirrors, okay? We'll try to make it easy. We'll try to understand and explain it. Let's take it one by one. Suppose there is a electrohydraulic lithotriptor. Now, what is the basic understanding of electrohydraulic lithotriptor is, this is a very classical diagram. You will come across this multiple places. You are reading standard literature, you will come across this diagram. This electrohydraulic lithotriptor, this is the F1. As I always say, F1 is the place where the energy is generated. The shock waves are generated. F2 is the place where the stone is placed and it, all the shock will be merged there. And what is going to be the responsible for the reflection is the mirror. And with the shape of the mirror for an electrohydraulic lithotripsy is going to be ellipsoid or hemi-ellipsoid. So it's going to be an elliptical shape. Now, the shocks which are generated in an EHL is generated by the this particular thing is known as the spark plug. Okay, this spark plug is going to give intermittent shock waves and this is placed under a water. It's going to the shock wave is in the form of a bubble. Okay, so these shock waves which are produced by the spark plugs, they are going to be reflected to this mirror. They're going to go to the mirror and the mirror is going to concentrate them to the second focal point where the stone is placed for lithotripsy. Now, this uh, mirror, if it is not an ellipsoid mirror, this spark plugs, though since they are the water bubbles, this ellipsoid has a lot of curve in it. This is going to hold the bubbles there and in a more concentrated way, it will be able to now focus the waves or the energies. So if we use a caustic lens here, it won't work. If we use a parabolic, it will be less. So the reason why we use an ellipsoid reflector, the physics behind is, is the spark plugs generate water bubbles, mainly the vapor bubbles, which is because the whole electrohydraulic mechanism is working on the underwater. So this is why we use an ellipsoid reflector and the ellipsoid reflectors are going to focus it to the second focal point where the stones are placed and they are going to be fragmented. They're coming to the mechanism, how the stones will be fragmented at this level. Let us understand how the waves or energies are transmitted to the stone. Number one, electrohydraulic. Problem is, the spark, as the name suggests, spark, it is going to be sudden, it is going to be irregular, it is going to be intermittent. The sparks are going to come and go and intermittent. And so the problem is, this will be very irregular fragmentation. This is the side effect. And this is the reason why we don't use EHL. Most of the centers in the world are not using EHL. And uh, EHL lithotripsy is not practical currently. It's mostly the centers are using piezoelectric or the electromagnet. Now, what is electromagnetic? So electromagnetic, again, a very simple mechanism. So in here, we use a magnet. You can see the magnetic coils here. And there are charges in the magnet. These magnetic coils are going to generate energy or the waveforms. Okay. Now you can see this is a magnetic coil here. This is a magnetic coil here. This is again a magnet. The red ones are the magnetic coils. So the magnetic coils are going to generate this waveforms, waves, and these are going to be transmitted. Let us take up, this is a classical, the acoustic lens. These magnetic waves are going to be transmitted to the membrane, and these membranes are going to now vibrate, start vibrating. And these vibrations are going to be transmitted via the acoustic lens. This one is known as the acoustic lens. Now it will be transmitted and concentrated to the stone surface. Okay, same is for a parabolic reflector. You would use a cylinder coil, cylindrical magnetic coil placed in the center of a parabolic reflector, which is going to concentrate to the stone surface. Okay, an ellipsoid is going to focus in a more concentrated, in a more tapered way. Electromagnet is going to focus in a more uh, diffuse way. Okay, since the way the waves are more diffuse, when the energy forms are more diffuse, since we are using an acoustic lens and a parabolic reflectors, Therefore, it covers a larger surface area of the skin. Therefore, it causes less pain to the patient. 
So the advantage is it causes less pain to the patient. Okay. So this is an advantage of electromagnetic lithotripsy. Okay. And it covers a larger surface area of the skin. Now, this is about the electromagnetic. So remember the mirrors, remember the first focal point, remember how the waves are generated and how is it transmitted. Coming to the third one, that is the piezoelectric. Piezoelectric is very simple. There are going to be piezoelectric crystals which are going to uh, generate the waves and they are going to be transmitted through the inbuilt mirrors mechanism, spherical mir uh, mirrors, which are going to be radiating it to the tones. Now, this is very uniform waves. Okay, you can do it without an anesthesia, least painful out of the three, but it's going to be expensive. Okay, that's the problem. So if you have to draw this, let me help you in understanding how to draw this. Okay, now suppose if you get to draw this, now the first thing that you have to see, I'll say always tell people, please, when you are drawing something in your FRCS exam, don't just start drawing like this and don't let the examiner wait for you to complete your diagram and then you start explaining. Please don't do that. While you are drawing, keep talking to the examiner. That's more professional and easy and even convenient for you to show that it's your understanding is clear. So I will tell that, okay, there is a F1 focal point where the waves will be generated, shock waves will be generated, and there is an F2 focal point where the stones are present to be fragmented. Okay. Now this F1 focal point, if we are talking about it, they tell you about an electromagnetic. So this F1 focal point will contain magnetic coils. So this can be either a cylindrical magnetic coils or they can be a, a circumferential magnetic coils. So there are going to be magnetic coils which are going to generate waves and these waves are going to go towards a membrane and they are going to vibrate this membrane. Okay. And then via a reflector, these waves are going to be reflected to the second focal point. Okay. Reflector can either be a parabolic reflector or it can be a acoustic reflector, acoustic lens. Okay. It could be an acoustic or a parabolic. So your whole concept of diagram should be clear. Your examiner should be satisfied with your understanding. So they just want to see how clear your concepts are. Okay. So once you have done with this, don't stop there. Okay. Once you have drawn this, please don't stop there. Try to extend it further. Tell the examiner that once the shock waves are transmitted to the level of the stone, the fragmentation of the stone is going to happen by this energy, which is delivered as like this. So this is the energy which is delivered. This creates a pressure of 40 mega pascal. So draw here. This is the pressure. This is the time. So you need to tell the examiner that the energy which is delivered at the level of the second focal point is 40 mega pascal. And this is going to produce a 40 mega pascal pressure in less than four microseconds. Okay. So you get so much of pressure in less than four microseconds. And this is what is going to cause spallation. Spallation is responsible for fragmentation of the stone. Okay. Once the pressure rises so high, it's going to come down immediately to a negative pressure of minus 10 megapascal. Now, once it comes down to a negative pressure, there is production of micro bubbles. Okay. And these micro bubbles are responsible for causing cavitation within the stone. So there are two important mechanisms. You need to complete your answer by talking about spallation and cavitation, which is at the peak of the high pressure, there will be fragmentation, which is known as spallation. And when there is a negative pressure, because of negative pressure, the bubbles will rise again and they are going to cause cavitation within the stones. Okay. They'll put, these bubbles are going to enter the stone. They are going to form cavities and stone is going to break into small, small pieces. This is again, it's not so easy. Okay. I'm telling you this looks easy, but it's not so easy. The examiners can take you really depth into this. I know this is not physics is not our subject, but I don't know why they're asking all this in technology, but you will be asked this. You have to be mentally prepared for this, that yes, table will, it's easy to answer contraindications. It's easy to answer indications and the favorable factors for yes, table and the stones which are resistant to yes, table will, but it's where they, they take you to the physics of yes, table will. That's why the purpose of this lecture is you should be equally confident and familiar with this physics as well. So please remember, 
what are the different generators, what are the advantages and disadvantages of them, and uh, what is F1 focal point, F2 focal point, and how are the waves focused to the second focal point, and when it is focused at the second focal point, you should be knowing how it is fragmented there. There is an in-detail discussion on ways of fragmentation, okay? And what are the modifications available? They will be asking you on that also. I'll just quickly tell you the names of that. So yeah, this is what we have discussed. So again, the spallation is, is usually it occurs on the opposite side of the, so if the wave is striking here, it's going to occur on the opposite side of the stone fragment, the opposite side of the stone, okay? This peak is going to hit here. Just imagine it's going to go opposite side of the stone is going to fragment and the micro bubbles are going to form here and this is part is going to cavitate. Okay. There are concepts in this, but just remember them. We will talk about the details in the class, but the whole purpose of the physics is everybody should know the physics. You cannot go to the exam without understanding the physics of an ESW well. And there are certain modifications in it. What is visual track ESW well? You can track the location of the stone in a real-time basis using a handheld device. And this is being asked, what are the recent advances in ESWL and how can we improve the efficiency of it? Shock wave, the normal shock wave form that we have discussed causes large fragments. Large fragments, chances of stone stress, chances of residual stones. So new technology is burst wave, burst wave form. So they are basically small energy, small low pressure, okay? They produce low pressure and more frequent waves. So they produce small, small, small fragments rather than a large fragments. So it's easy clearance, less stress, less complications. There are modifications for this and I uh, hope you understand the physics. The whole purpose of this video was to discuss with you the physics. And if you get to draw this uh, mechanism, please don't be scared of this. Don't be afraid of this. Please be confident in your diagram. Hope you find this useful. Please let me know. Thank you so much.